Yes, welcome to the next Brahmastra revision session of CA Final Audit New Syllabus. So, uh, we are going to cover up Quality Control chapter of CA Final Audit, which is the very first chapter uh, in your module. Although it does not come as the very first revision video in my series, all right. But after the discussion of 700 to 706, this is what I prefer: the discussion of uh, quality control. Now, uh, if you see your CA Final module, this is your first chapter. And when it comes to quality control, <coughs> there are two standards. One is SQC1, second one is SA220. Coming straight to the point. Obviously, this is going to be very sensitive for your exams. But first of all, if I talk about the concept, why there are two standards, this SQC1 and SA220. You know what? We need to play a game. Imagine that both of us are a part of very big firm. You know, there is a firm of around 20, 30 partners. And both of us are a part of that firm. And I am the CEO and the managing partner. You are not the CEO or the managing partner. Although you are a partner but a junior partner, uh, you know, you are handling some assignments. That's fine. But I am the CEO and the managing partner. Standards on quality control SQC1 gives me the guidance. It tells the CEO, the managing partner, that boss, CEO, managing partner, you need to design policies and procedures to maintain the quality of all the assignments which the firm is performing. So boss, I am going to design the policies and procedures and tell everyone in my firm that what should be the system of the firm, what should be the process of the firm in order to maintain the quality of that particular assignment. That is SQC1. Now let us talk about SA220. See, when I say SA, when I say SA, means obviously it talks about audit of financial statements. Now imagine you are also a partner, you are handling audit of X Limited. So in that audit of X Limited, you will be the in charge of maintaining the quality. And you have to implement the policies and procedures of the firm at your engagement level. That is SA220. So in audit of financial statements, in audit of financial statements, engagement partner is going to implement the quality control policies and procedures. So that is SA220. So one more time, SQC1 is at the firm level and SA220 is at the engagement level. SQC1 talks about the responsibilities of CEO and the managing partner. SA220 talks about engagement partner. In SQC1, the firm will design the policies and procedures. In SA220, engagement partner will implement those policies and procedures in that particular engagement level. Am I clear with this? Yes or no, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now, how you are going to move ahead in this discussion? Let me tell you, if you hear me for about next 120 seconds, the task is going to be very simple for you in this particular chapter. There are six elements of quality control system. That means when these six elements come together, then the firm says that, okay, boss, see, this is our quality control system. Okay. Now for these six elements, who will design the policies and procedures? The CEO and the managing partner. And how these six elements will be implemented in audit of financial statements, that is there in SA220, which will just talk about responsibilities of engagement partner. So tell me, which standard will have lengthier content? SQC1 and SA220 will be short. In fact, if you see over here also in your module, then first they are discussing about SQC1. Okay. All six elements have been discussed. But not from your angle, from my angle. That means as a CEO or the managing partner, what will be my responsibility and how to design the firm's policies, procedures and stuff. And then after that is over, you will see SA220. In SA220, again they are discussing those six elements. Right? But how to implement that in the audit of financial statements and what will be the responsibility of the engagement partner that is discussed at the engagement level over there. And after these six elements are over, 
then you will see some little bit practical discussion more practical discussion on uh, various quality review mechanisms i'll talk about that in the last two minutes all right so everyone over here six elements in sqc1 policies and procedures to be designed and established by the ceo and the managing partner six elements engagement partner how you are going to implement in your audit of financial statements so obviously now look at my notes first element sqc1 what is given in sqc1 what is given in sa220 second element what is given in sqc1 what is given in sa220 third element fourth element fifth element sixth element done that is how smartly we cover this particular standard so everyone over here first the very first element that comes on your screen is leadership responsibility who will be the leader for quality of overall firm ceo managing partner who will be the leader of a particular audit engagement engagement partner look at this sqc1 leadership responsibility is for quality within the firm leadership responsibility is for quality within the firm the ceo managing partner shall assume ultimate leadership responsibility is for quality within the firm all policies and procedures shall be designed keeping in view the following considerations now sqc1 is telling me pragnesh the ceo managing partner please maintain code in your leadership responsibilities that means when the ceo managing partner is designing all policies and procedures he should keep one thing in mind that commercial considerations are not about quality that means quality is about commercial considerations second all the operational leaders see as a as a managing partner i will select the operational leaders na when i am selecting the operational leaders i need to ensure that they have appropriate competence capabilities and stuff then boss i just i am not just supposed to keep talking 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 i need to also ensure that there are enough resources to maintain the quality right i should also devote resources to maintain the quality i should have training sessions i should have employees articles people assistants all right then in all my policies and procedures i should as a leader demonstrate commitment to quality i should as a leader demonstrate commitment to quality so everyone as a leader as a leader as a leader i need to consider code for maintaining quality within the firm so you get your four marks for leadership responsibility for quality within the firm operational leaders are the leaders who are looking after every single operation firm has so many operations admin operations assignment uh, to be handled all there are so many operations hr head and stuff okay now uh, this was a doubt for live students attending sa220 for quality within the audit the engagement partner will be responsible for quality within the audit now don't think from my angle think from your angle as if you are handling an audit team of 10 15 people what should be your actions and messages everyone over here engagement partner should be responsible for quality of each audit engagement assigned to him the actions and messages of the engagement partner engagement partner your actions and messages should emphasize should stress upon iq as an engagement partner you need to tell your uh, your audit team about iq about importance of i for importance of cat c for compliance tell your team that behave in a manner that complies with professional and legal standards ensure that procedures are performed in a manner that complies with firm's quality control policies and procedures a for we need to make such an a for appropriate audit report that report you know has no risk so basically it should have uh, it should the risk should be minimum right audit risk then team don't worry team don't worry you can raise your concerns without fear i am here dear don't fear okay then q for quality is essential i know it is very difficult to buy at this why because in practical life your partners are actually not giving you such actions and messages <laughs> but currently we need to stick to the book so everyone over here as a ceo managing partner think about code as an engagement partner iq and i importance of cat and q for quality is essential in audit that's it your leadership responsibilities are done leadership responsibility for quality within the firm will be the ceo managing partner leadership responsibility for quality within the audit will be the engagement partner one element is done second e for ethical requirements now when it comes to ethical requirements more content is there in sqc1 
everyone is aware about fundamental principles of professional ethics which are discussed in professional ethics chapter also integrity objectivity confidentiality professional competence due care professional behavior all of these fundamental principles for all of these fundamental principles as a leader i should ensure that across my firm the personals are following ethical requirements everyone over here look at the english please firm ceo managing partner shall establish policies and procedures to ensure that firm's personnel comply with relevant ethical requirements and when i am developing the policies and procedures when i am developing the policies and procedures for fundamental principles of professional ethics i should be worried about spam spam yeah s for spreading awareness through my policies and procedures i should spread awareness about ethical requirements p for there should be a process for dealing with non compliance if someone is not following ethical requirements there should be a process for that a for in my action also the ethics should appear right actions of the firm's leadership and m for my system should be such that it should keep on monitoring compliance with ethical requirements so one more time when i am creating policies and procedures for compliance with ethical requirements i need to be worried about spam all right listen to me can i say that independence is a very important ethical requirement yes or no sir yes sir but not in all engagements independence is an extremely important requirement whenever you are going to give audit and assurance service if you are going to give consultancy service that is not the most important requirement so independence for independence there should be separate policies and procedures such policies and procedures should be designed in such a manner that independence is complied not only designing you should also communicate these policies and procedures to your employees to your audit teams to your partners you should train them accordingly all right look at this communicate such policies to firm's person then your policy should be such that boss it is able to identify threats to independence for for, for if i give you one practical example you know in audit team normally audit team members are not allowed to join audit clients in the job immediately after they leave our firm there are some restrictions to maintain the independence boss normally audit teams are not allowed to deal in the shares and securities of the listed entities of which we are conducting audit because obviously it can compromise your independence boss so you should feel what you are trying to learn communicate such policies to firm's personnel identify threats to independence and boss who are you you are the engagement partner listen engagement partner yeah hello if you find out that your team is not complying with the independence requirements you don't take any action you report it to me please so i should develop a mechanism to report such threats to independence now the next couple of points are mcq points please be careful please be careful listen to me annually that means at least once in a year i repeat annually that means at least once in a year from all the audit teams and assurance teams the firm should take a declaration a signed declaration that all the audit and assurance teams you know all employees articles everyone involved in audit and assurance teams please give a declaration that you are complying with firm's policies and procedures for independence look at this obtain annual confirmation from all assurance teams that they are complying with firm's policies and procedures on independence one more mcq point in case of listed entities it is mandatory to rotate the engagement partner at least once in 7 years you know as per companies act a partnership firm can conduct audit of listed entity for 10 years 5 years into 2 times 10 years but the engagement partner must be rotated at least once in 7 years you know what this has been one of their favorite question in exams it has already been asked in july 21 attempt and this particular point has been one of their favorite for mcqs even in the old course obviously it is going to remain relevant in the new course also so these are the ethical requirements as per sqc1 the firm shall design the policies and procedures for these things as an engagement partner what will be your responsibility as an engagement partner your responsibility will be first to find out whether there are any threats to independence threats to compliance with ethical requirements if there are such threats then you relax you please don't take any unilateral action you will have to report to the relevant person within the firm and then both of us will decide and take appropriate action please remember this for mcq that the engagement partner himself is not authorized to take actions 
engagement partner shall report to the appropriate persons within the firm and then the firm and the partner shall decide appropriate action. I hope I am clear with this. I hope you are understanding that how content is different when it comes to SQC1 and SA220. So, SA220 is dependent upon SQC1. So, you should first always study SQC1 and then side by side study SA220. All right. L for leadership responsibilities is over. E for ethical requirements is over. Six elements are le ahem. A for acceptance and continuance of client relationship and engagement. Listen to me very carefully. Whether to accept a particular client or not, whether to reject a particular client or not, whether to continue with a particular client or not, these are firm's decisions, not engagement partners' decisions. So, with respect to client and engagement, acceptance and continuance, all of these decisions will be covered in SQC1. I will talk about what will be the role of engagement partner, but first please understand what is given in SQC1. I am Pragnesh and I am the CEO and the managing partner of the firm. I need to design the policies and procedures. First to decide whether a client should be accepted or not. Now whenever you are going to accept a client or even your life partner, there are three factors to be considered. Never forget that. First please evaluate the other person's honesty. Alright. Second then evaluate yourself also. Today if Anushka Sharma is ready to marry me, I am not going to accept that marriage, not because I have doubts over Anushka Sharma. I have doubts over myself. I know that I cannot handle her. Right. So, first is evaluate the integrity of the client. Second, evaluate your own resources, competence, capabilities. And third, decide whether both of you will be able to stay with each other or not. Compatibility, compliance with ethical requirements. Are you getting my point? So, everyone over here, firm shall establish policies and procedures to determine client engagement acceptance factors to be considered, integrity of the client, firm's resources and capabilities and compliance with ethical requirements. Now listen to me very carefully. Now listen to me very carefully. All of these three can be asked as a separate examination question also. That is why what I have done is in short I have written some hints over here. So if they talk about integrity of the client, how to analyze integrity of the client based upon their business, based upon their reputation, based upon their history, then your own firm's resources, competence, capabilities, knowledge, skill, experience, ability. Then in case of ethical requirements, independence, there should be no conflict of interest. Right? So if you want these three points, you can read once from the module in little bit more detail. All right. Then after deciding the acceptance, the next decision in life is whether you want to continue with this person or not. See, when we talk about continuance, please understand that these three points will be re-evaluated. Second year onwards, these three points will be re-evaluated. Plus, we will also think whether there has been any limitation on scope of audit imposed by management and those charged with governance. If there has been a limitation on scope of the assignment, then in that case, we may decide about withdrawal from the engagement. We may decide about withdrawal from the engagement. You know what, my dear friends, there should be a standard policy for breakups also. Keep a very standard policy. See, whenever you want to break up, discuss with the other person why you want to leave. Then decide whatever are your responsibilities with respect to your breakup. Fulfill them. All right. And also maintain documentation of your last memories. So look at this. Firm shall establish withdrawal policies and procedures that are to be followed in case of withdrawal. In November 22, they had asked a question about withdrawal policies and procedures. <coughs> For writing these many points over here, only these short points, students were getting 3 out of 5 marks and stuff. Withdrawal policies and procedures. Whenever you talk about withdrawal, there is always a point of discussing the matter with management and DCWG. Considering and fulfilling your professional and legal responsibilities. Right? And then documenting whatever are the significant discussions that took place during a withdrawal stage. Alright. So, these are the points when it comes to client or engagement, acceptance and continuance. Client or engagement, acceptance and continuance. What will be the role of engagement partner over here in case of audit of financial statements? Listen, engagement partner, you can't decide whether to accept a client or not. All of those decisions will be taken by the firm's leadership. What will be your role? Your role will be to obtain the information from the firm about that particular client. Whenever we had accepted the client, we would have already taken some information. You please go through those files. 
and you let us know whether our decision to accept this particular audit is proper or not. And if you feel that we shouldn't have accepted this particular client, then you inform it to us. You yourself cannot decide about withdrawal. Engage with partner shall review the information of the client or engagement obtained from firm's policies and procedures. Engage with partner shall determine whether conclusions reached regarding acceptance continuance are appropriate or not. If you have any adverse findings, if you feel that this client shouldn't have been accepted, then in that case, you please report to the relevant persons within the firm and then we will take appropriate action. Please understand this can also be one of your MCQ that engage with partner himself cannot decide about withdrawal. I hope I've made myself very, 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 very clear. Yes, L for leadership responsibilities, E for ethical requirements, A for acceptance and continuance, then H for human resource. See, when it comes to human resource, I will wind up this point in about 60 to 90 seconds. When it comes to human resource, there is no point in SA220. There is just one line that is why I have written it over here. Why? Because every engagement team will not have its own human resource department. <laughs> Human resource department will be common for the entire firm, right? So there is a point only in SQC 1 that firm should establish policies and procedures to ensure that human resource management. First of all, the human resource itself should be CCC, competent, capable and it should show commitment to quality. You know, my HR should get me such persons, such employees and articles who have lots of CCC. I hope the C that you are reading over here and not the C that you are thinking. All right. Then... When it comes to HR department, I should have some policies of recruitment, training, compensation and stuff. These are HR issues. And in very big firms, you know, like big force and stuff, deciding who will be the engagement partner, giving the role to the engagement partner, all of this is also done by the head HR. So with respect to engagement partner, HR policy shall consider whether engagement partner has necessary CCC and its role is also clearly defined. And in SA220, there is just one line that whatever audit team members have been given to you, you are the engagement partner. At least evaluate those members, whether the audit team itself has appropriate competence and capabilities or not. But no need to buy hard that particular line. So L for leadership responsibilities is over. E for ethical requirements. A for acceptance and continuance. H for human resource. And now comes one more E. Engagement performance. Was I am the CEO and the managing partner. In my firm, there are so many assignments. You know, there is audit, there is review, there are other assurance engagements, there are other services. For across all of these engagements, I need to ensure that, boss, there are some strict, clear policies and procedures to brief the engagement teams. That means the teams are briefed properly, explained properly what is their role. Then, I should have the policies and procedures so that all my teams get proper consultation either within the firm or outside the firm on difficult matters. Then I should ask all of my firm members to have clear policies on documentation. Documentation is very important. You have seen that in your articleship, right? Then if at all across my firm there is a difference of opinion, then I should organize a fight club match. No, 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 no then there has to be some policy and the procedure. For example, if two junior partners have a difference of opinion, then the senior partner or the managing partner will decide. All right. That can be one of the example over here. So it's that there should be a policy and procedure even for differences of opinion. Then the most important point in order to improve the engagement performance is EQCR engagement quality control review. Let me tell you, this is very, 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 very sensitive. It has always been one of their favorite in exams. And that is the reason I would like to go a little slow over here. After that, there is only a little discussion left. Engagement quality control review. First of all, what is this engagement quality control review? Listen to me. If ABC firm is the auditor of X Limited and if X Limited is a listed entity, CAA is the engagement partner and CAA also has his audit team. Can I say as an engagement partner before signing the report, obviously CAA would have reviewed the work of his team. Yes or no, sir? Yes, sir. 
that is normal partner review but what is engagement quality control review engagement quality control review is nothing but an additional review of the work performed by audit team sir that means either mr b or mr c that means someone other than the engagement partner will review the work performed by the engagement team such kind of process is mandatory only in case of audit of listed entities voluntarily auditor may apply in case of unlisted entities voluntarily auditor may apply in case of unlisted entities but million dollar question is who can conduct this engagement quality control review i gave you one option a partner other than engagement partner second option some senior experienced person of the firm can also do it yes even though that person is an employee still he can do it third option if you think that what if uh, auditor is the proprietor and stuff then suitably qualified external person can also do it fourth option that in case of big four there is a team of individuals which is headed by chartered accountant on it that is also fine hello but obviously the engagement quality control reviewer should be a chartered accountant huh? <laughs> and should have that much experience that he can act as an engagement partner and in case of a team every team member may not be a chartered accountant but should be headed by chartered accountant now listen to me in the new syllabus module there is a superb question that engagement quality control reviewer eqcr must maintain his objectivity i repeat eqcr must maintain his objectivity that means he must ensure that he remains unbiased you what what is the question i will tell you this is the case study and the engagement partner the engagement partner continuously seeks the guidance of engagement quality control reviewer imagine you are asking the examiner to help you in writing your paper come on man that is not going to work so boss engagement quality control reviewer cannot participate in the audit right because he has to review the work so that is one point that engagement quality control reviewer must maintain his objectivity what is the role of engagement quality control reviewer boss engagement quality control reviewer will come at the very end of the audit and he is going to review selected documentation he is going to review significant judgments he is going to review at the end you know the draft report and the draft financial statements which are prepared at the very end then listen to me very carefully engagement quality control reviewer will also review independence compliance by the audit team that means whether the engagement partner had actually assessed the independence of the team and whether the team has actually complied with that or not this will also be reviewed now this has been one of their favorite question in the old course can be repeated in the new course also that this is the role of engagement quality control reviewer as well as the engagement partner engagement partner will check the independence of the team and engagement quality control reviewer will review the independence compliance that the team has maintained engagement partner cannot deny to show these documents to engagement quality control reviewer listen to me for one more point engagement partner cannot reduce his responsibility huh? because of engagement quality control review 
just because there is one more person who is doing engagement quality control review that does not mean that engagement partner can reduce his responsibilities and let me tell you that in case of listed entities eqcr must be completed before audit report is signed eqcr must be completed before the audit report is signed i hope i have made myself very very clear over here yes sir yes sir so what will be the role of engagement partner you you engagement partner <coughs> as per sa 220 first of all you should do enough dsr of your team direction supervision and review of your team second if your team is worried about certain matters then you should give them proper consultation engage your partner shall determine whether there is a need to obtain consultation and boss it is your responsibility to ensure that engagement quality control reviewer is timely appointed let me tell you if i forget to appoint engagement quality control reviewer you will remind me all right determine whether eqcr has been appointed and till the time eqcr is not completed you cannot date the auditor's report i hope i have made myself very very clear yes sir yes sir lay ahem l e a h e is done we move to the very very last component that is monitoring was i am worried whether my whole firm is following this particular system or not so i should monitor whether my all my policies procedures are relevant adequate and they are operating effectively so this is monitoring of my own quality control system and when i am deciding about monitoring when i am deciding about monitoring there are certain factors to be considered boss when i am thinking about monitoring my entire firm's systems i should be worried of incorporating new developments what if there is a new index new essays and stuff then i should be thoughtful is there any complaint against my firm i should deal with the complaints and allegations also of my firm then boss if my if my firm has committed some errors then obviously i should take some remedial action also some resolving action also over there listen to me in big firms after the entire monitoring is over then the ceo and the managing partner comes out with results of monitoring so i will publish the results you as an engagement partner should go through those results in those results you should check whether there is any negative comment on your team in those results you should check whether there is any new procedure to be adopted so engage your partner shall evaluate the results of firm's monitoring process and take necessary corrective action example updating audit procedures so as i showed it to you in the beginning the six elements of quality control system lay ahem in sqc1 we are designing it and in sa220 engagement partner is just implementing that at the audit engagement level that is over what is the extra thing that you need to do from the module two things first you need to read the difference between sqc1 and sa220 let me tell you i have already taught you the difference that sqc1 is at the firm level sa220 is the audit engagement level but you know what still at least once you should officially read this difference okay you will easily understand it don't worry after that there are quality control mechanisms given see please understand sqc1 and sa220 is internally how the firm maintains the quality but externally who checks that who checks who investigates the firm first is peer review board by the icai icai has created separate peer review board peer review means the work of one practicing ca will be checked by his peer that means another practicing ca the icai maintains a peer review board where practicing cs can register as an examiners and check the work of other practicing cs but the most important mcq level question is that in case of peer review we focus only on assurance assignments that means peer review board can select you and check whether your assurance engagements have been done properly or not after that just read once you will get an idea second quality review board quality review board has been set up by central government not by the icai although quality review board is also part of ca act 1949 but it has been set up by central government quality review board focuses on quality of statutory auditors 
and no other ca only the statutory auditors of some selected assignments that's it once you read once you will get an idea in peer review quality review they keep on saying whether the quality is proper or not whether professional ethical technical standards have been complied or not all right only one one paragraph they have given then the most important mcq level question listen to me very carefully third is national financial reporting authority national financial reporting authority has been set up under companies act 2013 to investigate the accounts and audit quality of some selected companies only i repeat one more time national financial reporting authority can investigate accounts and audit of some selected companies only which companies they have given a list over here actually there are five to six types of companies but they have given only three listed companies insurance companies and banking companies listed companies insurance companies and banking companies now listen to me very carefully for these three companies only national financial reporting authority can investigate the quality of accounts and audit peer review board can always investigate yeah because peer review board is created by the ici what i want to say is that for these three companies the audit quality cannot be examined by quality review board quality review board cannot examine the audit quality of these three companies because it falls under the jurisdiction of national financial reporting authority quality review board can examine only and only if national financial reporting authority has asked quality review board to specifically do so so remember one english line quality review board cannot examine the uh, quality of uh, audit of such companies which are covered under nfra jurisdiction unless otherwise referred by nfra to do so i want a confirmation are you clear with this yes or no sir yes sir yes sir yes sir and after that this chapter gets over there are some case study based mcqs and some normal mcqs and the questions if you if you go through this immediately after the lecture is over i am for sure confident that you will be able to understand thank you so much